G'day, I'm Jake from Five Pants Fab. Just a quick video today. I'm going to give you five tips uh, in two minutes. Maybe three. Soldering wires. Uh, mostly for automotive repair, but you can use the same principles wherever you solder. Um, I'm going to give you five of my best tips for a, a good, long lasting solder joint. Hope you like the video. Give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. If you like it, there will be more videos like this to come. Thanks for watching. Okay, first tip is to use some good quality wire strippers, something like these, that will actually grip the insulation and pull it off for you. These ones here, when you use the um, the holes designed for stripping wires, get it in the camera. Uh, even if you don't pinch the wires, it's very easy to just nick them slightly, and that gives you a little stress riser, which will encourage the wires to break later. Um, so it's best to avoid that. So. Wire strippers like these, very effective, very easy, and put that there. You can see it just does a nice job of it every time. Second tip use the right flux. These wires are nice and clean, so I'll use a rosin type uh, rosin cord solder. Uh, if they were, um, if the harness had been damaged and you get some some water in there, or some even worse, if you get salt, um, you'll get what's known as well. The wires go green or they go black, uh, usually called green death or black death. Uh, that's all round bad news, but you can get away. You can get away with using acid core solder. Uh, it's just really bad for your eyes and your nose so make sure you're well ventilated and only use it when you need to. Um, rosin core still not great to breathe in but it's far nicer. Um, I never use any pastes. The flux that is in the solder is well and truly up to the job. Third tip, heat shrink. Get the double walled heat shrink. It is a little bit more expensive but it is completely worth it. Uh, the inner wall is just like a glue, um, it come, becomes very soft and it gives you a really good watertight, airtight seal. You don't need to worry about putting any dielectric grease or silicon grease on your solder joint to keep water out. It will actually seal up and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, it sets nice and hard and that gives your joint a bit more support as well, uh, especially in a, I've got an automotive and uh, mechanical background. So whenever I'm fixing wiring, <laughs> it's usually because it's broken due to vibration or uh, it's been pulled the wrong way or one or another. Uh, solder joints are particularly prone to breaking again from vibration because you have a, a little rigid section on a otherwise flexible wire and so it always breaks at the very end so any support you can give that join with a, a longer piece of heat shrink is going to make it last a lot longer so always cut your heat shrink a little bit longer than your joins going to be uh, as long as as long as practical really um, for that uh, just to make sure it seals and supports the join better Fourth tip, and we still haven't even gotten to a soldering iron. All the preparation's the important part. So fourth tip is twitch them together. Now, a lot of people recommend to twist the wires before. I like to leave them, or uh, I like to leave them nice and flat. Um, sort of how they come when you strip the wire. I cross them over uh, in about the middle. If we can. Zoom right in for this one. See if I can keep it in one spot. I cross them over halfway and then I just twist them around each other. 
as tight as possible. Now the reason I don't twist them beforehand is if you leave them flat, once you twitch them like this you can actually jiggle them and it becomes quite a flat join. Just want to make sure any little stragglers get tucked in because they will poke holes in your heat shrink. It becomes quite a flat join, there's lots of really good contact in there and that will take solder nicely. So my fifth tip, and probably the most important, is to get the solder to flow, flow through your join as quickly as possible. So you, you reduce the heat transfer up your wires, which reduces the amount of solder that goes up your wires, and that will reduce the chance of having a, a break sort of just up here or here after a little bit of vibration. So to do that, you just have to make sure your soldering iron is hot, just melt a little bit on the end, make sure there's no resistance. And you want to have a little bit of a blob on the end of your soldering iron, just so you get really good contact to transfer that heat and conduct the heat into your wires as quickly as you can. So, so we'll just put a bit of pressure at the back there, melt some in, you'll see that starts to flow. And then very quickly we'll be able to just work in as much solder as we can until it flows to the ends. Take it off and we are done. So you can see we've got really nice coverage. We don't have any bits sticking out to damage the heat shrink and not something that you should do but what we can do is bend it just there we can see that that's that's as far as the solder got which is pretty reasonable uh, that section there will be supported nicely by the heat shrink So that, that comes back to using that nice stiff double walled heat shrink. Just see there that little shiny. You can hold it in focus. There you go, that little shiny section on the inside of the heat shrink. That is the glue. So we have a perfectly sealed. Repaired piece of wire. I hope you found this video useful. I hope um, you picked up a few tips out of it. If there's anything you're not sure about, let me know in the comments. Uh, hit subscribe, hit the like button, and stay tuned for the next one. Thanks.